So I am going to, these are perhaps going to be somewhat in code collection of comments. Um, I was particularly an, enjoyed um, the opportunity to put my brain to these two papers. And um, I'll um, mention quickly that I, I got to read two versions of Professor Fife's paper. <laughs> and I'm going to try to pull them together. But first of all, I want to say that uh, while um, Hi, Dehas gave you my uh, administrative hats. I am coming from this as a sociologist and a demographer. And in my paper on Thursday, we'll be talking primarily from a demography perspective. And today, I, I will refer somewhat to my sociology background. Um, uh, what I wanted to, um, uh, let me see what I'll try to be coherent here. So, um, Originally, uh, Professor Feist's paper was about this idea of the mobility turn, a discursive turn in how we think about um, the ch change and movement of ideas and people. And um, in reading that paper, I, I, I wanted to, I kept asking about place and it the, the, the notion of uh, sort of the movement away from, towards mobility hides sometimes or takes for granted place and structure and um, and I and I was particularly compelled to think about that with Professor Fife's paper. Um, with regards to uh, um, Bakewell's paper, I was uh, also um, the migration systems piece implies something about stability and order and this can also, uh, we have to think about why you know, when does that happen and what order and whose order. Um, and I also wanted to say, I think that Feist is suggesting that systems are not, maybe not more than heuristic and Bakewell saying, yes, maybe it is more than heuristic. Um, so I think the challenges in this session and our discussion today are one, definitional, uh, two, that, um, you know, nobody, explicitly said, neither of our speakers today in their papers talked about closed versus open systems and what that implies. And they danced around the notion of evolution and change. And, um, and I think that you, we have to take out the, we have to be much more explicit definitionally in terms of a system as being open or closed and in terms of how we understand the evolution and change of social, social relationships and social structures. So, uh, and I think uh, Professor Feist's second paper and talk today uh, focused on mechanisms, which would be precisely about that. So I'm going to quickly, I know this is too many words, but quickly talk about um, <laughs> Professor Feist's paper, first paper, which I read, uh, which was about transnational fields and spaces and networks as, um, as a way that, as a set, uh, two sets of inquiry that have amplified and grown the concept and observation of mobility. And as a consequence, have required us to redefine how uh, redefine and recast social inequality and our understanding of social inequality. Um, in this case, uh, how physical border crossing um, perhaps may be more important than, in, than trade policy for income equalization, or that there might be a new idea about Europeanization from below as you bring more people into Europe from uh, who cross borders to come to Europe to work. Uh, and the notion that uh, states um, are trying to protect borders, creating new symbolic and material and uh, regulatory boundaries to capture rent and protect uh, existing systems within their boundaries. In addition, FICE shifts gears and thinks about new mobilization concepts that have emerged as a result of transnational uh, and network ideas, which um, suggest wa new ways, new sources of social change and disruption to social order, um, uh, primarily around the idea of the global mobilization around rights. I'm re rephrasing this here, but around rights and religion and resistance to hegemonic economic and political interests. Um, and I would suggest that um, the insight that I got 
and gain from this was we need to maybe perhaps rethink where agency is within a social structure as a result of these recasting, conceptual recasting of mobile, mobility. Um, and, and the second piece is uh, thinking about how uh, place, uh, reconsidering social and spatial, uh, it's not just transnational or mobility, but it's reconceptualing social and spatial place to fully animate the mobility turn. In this case, I thought Feist tries to get us to pay attention to the state and bring the state back in, um, uh, and then asks us to question uh, within spatial hier hierarchies and political, social, categorical distinctions that are new, new categories of distinction. And particularly, the idea of immobility as, a, as, a, as a, the new marginalized. Uh, nevertheless, the, we're left with um, some real uh, and conceptual, real challenges and conceptual challenges, um, which we are still str we're struggling with as social scientists with regards to um, states as not being com entirely reified, but and but still fundamental to our understanding of social systems, um, and uh, and and in both papers we're struggling with this notion of policy and the policy and environment. Um, and Feist today, uh, this is just a quick, <laughs> quick summary that I, got, I um, took from um, the uh, over PowerPoint that I got ahead of time. But um, this is uh, systems, uh, again just quickly, systems as perhaps holistic, heuristic, um, that we need to think about agency in the context of systems. Um, uh, and but leaving us with lots of questions that, and shortcomings in a systems approach which have to do with um, how do systems address distribution of power and agency and inequality and more generally what does, what does systems theory tell us about causation. Um, there's a bit, there's a shift here, an elision of terminology from a systems approach to more of a causal um, mechanism, social mechanism approach. And I was, I saw, I heard and read echoes of Tilly and Zimmel and Giddens and Blau and Burt in his paper, which I think are very useful uh, touchstones to refer to in thinking about social st structuration and, and its relationship to, to systems theory. Um, uh, I'm going to, so I have these uh, complimentary notes here. I'm just going to, I, I took the liberty of trying to, um, Think about repicture uh, Bakewell's Bakewell's table schematic, and um, and so apologies if I didn't capture it. Um, I I was just again trying to ground the um, de ground the concepts in 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 and also help me also pull out some key co conceptual um, categorization. So. In, on, the, on your left-hand side, we have um, sort of origin uh, communities and origin place-based institutions. We have flows connecting, uh, migrants flowing, sending remittances, et cetera, to destinations. And then eventually we have the emergence of institutions which are probably mediated by um, origin place-based institutions of strategies of communities or households or immigration policies and destinations. And in both ends of this spectrum, we have social and cultural structures that also mediate the selectivity of, uh, of how people are incorporated or segmented assimilation or how people, are, who's, who's selected, who, who is, who moves. So, um, I, I then, as I was thinking about systems and definitions, I, I went back to some, I went and found some definitions <laughs> myself to try to, and I know that you've all been in, immersed in this idea, but I wanted to go back and, and find, um, and I went back to a very old reference, and, um, and <laughs> old for, for some of us in the room. <laughs> but anyway, um, so the, uh, um, I think one of the key points here is that there's something, there's an integrity about the interconnectedness between elements within a system. 
and which defines a boundary around the system which makes it distinct from the rest of the environment. And the key thing about the connection, co this idea of connections actually I found quite salient in the context of migration. And in, partic in particular, how do we think about this connection? We have to think about this connection as two elements sharing some kind of compelling interest in being connected. And, and this is where we might begin to think about agency and, and perhaps even the contingent nature of, or the stochastic nature of these flows. Because in the um, figure, the heuristic that um, Oliver showed earlier, uh, the, the lines that connect the boxes have no directionality and they are not either bigger or larger or more important or less important. And in fact, that's what's important about agency is how long, how, how strong and how long are these connections, why are these connections maintained between elements of the system? A second piece about systems is that um, a system is not, a system that gets divided is not just two, does not become two systems. It actually is a broken system. So um, again, we can know that a system might have existed maybe when we see that it breaks apart and doesn't work anymore. But finally, a key element of this uh, Chaklin's work is this idea of, you know, arrangement of pieces is crucial in the structure. There's a structure to the arrangement um, and that behavior does change the structure and structure will change behavior or affects behavior in it. Um, so uh, I think that, yes, uh, I'm, I'm sort of moving also, along with Oliver, towards getting beyond us as just a heuristic device, that it helps us get a little bit better, see complexity and maybe even predict um, outcomes uh, that we might not otherwise um, have been able to. Um, but one of the major problematics here is uh, boundaries and structure and no clear theory or description of change within uh, the migration systems. Um, approach. So I've added to Oliver's um, idea and I took the, also the liberty of bringing in Feist into this picture <laughs> so we can see. Um, I would argue that there are some key elements that were missing from or might have been uh, reorganized slightly differently with regards to the table in Oliver's paper which is that um, uh, at the top, selectivity. Selectivity, migrant selectivity is really a key, from a demographer's perspective, a very key component of migration. And um, actually quite, although initially theor theorized a lot, under theorized more recently. And, um, and it, it, ha it has, it creates compelling shared interests and dependencies here. Um, and it's not just, uh, so it's not only the flows of ideas and money and um, the remittances that might go forward and backward through the flows, but also who's flowing and how, and, uh, how who they are and how they are related and connected to both origin and destination. And the connections, as we move down here, are critical because they're not necessarily uh, fixed and connections can be described as, uh, as variable and having meaning. Um, secondly, I want to go down to the institution level. I'd like to argue that we might turn to some theorists in, um, in political science and economics who have talked about institutions, namely Douglas North, Eleanor Ostrom, who uh, talk about institutions in a very um, uh, clear way, and that is institutions are norms, uh, rules, and strategies, and that these are things that routinize and regularize um, uh, connections and, and, and compel particular shared interests. And I don't mean necessarily that sh compelling shared interests are sort of some positive, you know, wonderful thing compelling shared interests might also be exploitative. So that it's not necessarily a, um, a we went, one might not, and we could talk about this later, this might not be something that, um, oh, I don't want it to be overly 
um, positivist here. Um, finally, as we move down, um, uh, down the chart here, I would suggest that one of the important elements of um, Thomas's paper uh, that I read before and today is this notion of the structures of inclusion and exclusion and how those um, mediate or moderate or um, are critical to understanding the social mechanisms that connect people uh, and motivate um, and, and drive compelling shared interests and dependencies um, and possibly um, places in which one might see social change. Now, I want to shift a little bit for, to say, take a step back because um, why do we care about this systemic, this idea of um, imposing migration systems, ideas or empirics on, on, our, on migration research as social scientists? Um, one, uh, this is because for me, what animates me about migration is that migration for me is a, some, a site for seeing often taken for granted social structures, whether they're material or symbolic, that order human relations. So sometimes I'm not actually really interested in explaining migration. What I'm interested in understanding better is a result of migration. Sometimes you see things that you wouldn't otherwise see because they become salient and relevant to the people on the ground moving or to categorizations of exclusion or exclusion in origin and destination. And um, so it reveals migration is inherently disruptive, can be inherently disruptive to social order. The other reason is, um, the other reason why I get excited about my doing migration research is that it really uh, introduces some serious methodological challenges. Because any question about migration and you could put in migration in any human or social outcome um, raises uh, issues of, um, well, how do we know migrants are different, really different than non-migrants? How different are migrants from non-migrants? How different are migrants from the people that they're moving into? How do we know whether migration actually had an impact on some human outcome, whether it's migration and health, migration and inequality, migration and economic growth, et cetera. And um, a key next question that I'm particularly interested in exploring, and I'm quite curious to see what the results are from the Themis project, is how do we understand the relationship between migration systems and the evolution of migration systems and the changing nature of migrant selectivity? Um, because it's that interaction between selectivity and migrant systems that actually is going to give us some very important insights about why does migration matter to any other social outcome. And, um, and it's really uh, in, because it's such an inherently <laughs> contingent and difficult and, and currently what we can say about the relationship between migration and XYZ outcomes is that um, all of our results are constrained tempor temporally and uh, comparatively, given the nature, this dynamic nature. So that's all I wanted to say, and thank you very much. <laughs>